guys, welcome to this episode of Context is King. I'm Rebecca Brayton, and with me as always is WatchMojo founder and CEO Ashkan Karbusrushan to answer some viewer questions. Today's comes from, I hope I am saying this right and I apologize if I am not, uh, Bartek Lukasek? Luk Lukasek? I don't know. I'm very sorry. Um, and his question is basically he runs a production house and he does a lot of branded content and he's got a lot of different clients, so he, he basically wants some advice about his prospects. Sure, so we'll put his full question, uh, censoring a bit of the confidential information mm -hmm. at his request, obviously, in the comments so you could read it all. So the main, you know, I've talked about success as a startup is uh, ambition, vision, execution, persistence, as well as luck, timing, and focus once you know what to focus on. So timing... I really got to memorize that. <laughs> timing is key here and context. So... When I started the business in 2006, it was very different because not everybody wanted to produce content. The barriers to entry and the setup costs to buy all this gear was much higher. Today, with our basic phones, we could do what we had to spend tens of thousands of dollars to do. Batshit crazy. And the way that that spills over to his question then is relative ease of who's going to produce what, right? Back in the day, we could produce our content. It was branded to Watch Mojo, and we would license it to a lot of companies. You know, they wanted just cooking videos or makeup videos, and, and we would just feed it to them because they really did not want to undertake that pain. Today, it's not that hard, right? I mean, everybody can produce. Then in, in another era, we undertook fair use risk. So we were crazy. We were like these seemingly, it was legal, but we were these outlaws who were producing you know, clip-based programming, and we would indemnify when we would put our videos on YouTube. So if you're a YouTuber, if you're whomever else, you're like, great, we'll, we want this content because it features Batman, and, and you guys are producing it, and it's your risk. Whereas today, everybody, thanks to, amongst others, some of the work that we did behind the scenes to establish, you know, the rights of fair use, everybody does it. You go to CNN, you go to Insider, you go, I mean, everybody does clips, and it's great. It's fantastic because, you know, that's legally you're allowed to. So the advice I want to give him is less about tactics. I want to answer it in the form of, if I could ever give a specific, I'll get very specific. But in this case... I'm not so sure, and he's based in Poland, I think, mm -hmm. too, so Sorry, that's also a very specific. different market, different size. Look, you could go up to, I think the main broadcaster there is Onet or 1T or O-N-E-T. -E you could go up to media companies there and, and do service contracts, and you could find advertisers, which he seems to do through branded business and agencies to create videos for. Or you could produce videos and, and publish them like we did on YouTube and build a media business, although today there's a lot more com competition and clutter. So the opportunity cost to produce videos is going to be high because when you put them on YouTube, it'll take forever to build an audience and you could go make money from a services production contract with the agencies. And So what's the point I'm making? The, the lesson to entrepreneurs is not all revenue is actually created equally, meaning it's all about the projected value you create for every dollar of revenue, right? And in finance, that's what you talk about, price revenue or price sales ratio. And then there's also stocks are generally traded on a price to earnings, PE. You've probably heard of the concept of PE, price to earnings ratio. What that means is if you are a producer and, and if you are producing videos for an ad agency that you don't own the rights to, they just pay you random number $100,000 in a year to produce this content. As a production shop, if you're lucky, you'll get one to two times value created for a dollar of revenue. So you're producing $100,000. It may not even be profitable at the end of the day because you've got to incur the costs and pay people and edit it. But you only created about $100,000 to $200,000 of value for your franchise. However, as a media company, It'll take a lot longer to generate $100,000 possibly if you're producing videos and putting them on the internet and building your audience and building your brand. But it's not crazy to command 10 times value created, projected for every $1 of revenue, for example. So there, you generated the same $100,000. Maybe it was harder and longer. But now you're getting valued at a million dollars. So all of a sudden, you're worth, on paper granted, a lot more. That concept of earnings and, and ratios to earnings and ratios to sales is something that 99% of entrepreneurs never think of, right? And that's because- Isn't it just like basic, smart investing? 
Yeah, but because most entrepreneurs are basically smart engineers and programmers right. and coders, and they may not be investing, but that's exactly it, right? So the same reason why a lot of entrepreneurs chase what is hot today, they don't understand that by the time that their idea actually simmers and grows, you're talking three to five years, so go where the puck is going to go, not where the puck is today. So my answer to him is more, it's a, it's a, it's a question between lifestyle, meaning if you just want to make money to put in your pocket to travel, to go out and drink good wine and eat good food and travel and visit places, you may not care about value creation because that is just a paper notional amount. It's a figment of your imagination until somebody comes and goes, here, I want to buy your business. So you should absolutely care about the revenue stream. Even if you're not creating long-term value, you just want to have more money to go and, and you know, drink good wine right now. So that's a very personal question, but it should also then come back with, well, what's the purpose, right? If you're killing yourself, but you're not actually creating value, then you're not really doing yourself a favor long term, uh, because as they say, you could always make or lose more money, but you'll never make up for lost time. Right. Well, I think that's good advice for anybody. Anyway, if you guys have any questions for us, be sure to leave them in the comments, and we will get to them next time. See you then.